Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, And so as we continue our study on the early church in the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit pouring over and into God's people. And I believe, and we know this for a fact, that God's going to do that again. And I believe it's in our lifetime. May we learn to seek and wait for His Spirit. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never Jesus, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I know. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. We're going to sing that hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, you're still me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your this is my confidence, you've never failed. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence.
Jesus, your promises will never fail us. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. We're glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. Psalms 13 verse 6 says, I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. I know that God's been good to you this week. So let's all repeat together. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We want to invite you to join us for a special live worship service next Sabbath, August 29, from 6 to 7 p.m. We're going to have an outdoor worship service on the lawn at Hinsdale Adventist Academy. We invite everybody to attend. Here's the rules. Bring a mask, bring your lawn chair, and please sit in the circles with your immediate family only. I know that God's going to bless us as we worship together and Pastor Glenn shares a short message with us. We also want to remind the church that we're having our daily Bible studies on the book of Acts. We invite you to join us. Please go to the church website, click on the tab that says Book of Acts Bible Studies. It will show you the links and the times for every night of the week, and you simply have to click on the link and it will take you directly to the Bible study. So may God bless us today as we worship Him. As Psalms 136 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. May God bless us as we worship Him today. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Please join with us as we worship the God of creation and recreation. I searched the world, but He couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. nothing. this declaration that he has turned our lives around. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Say it again. Turn! 
Jesus, we declare there's no one higher, no one greater than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn grace. You turn grace into God. So we continue to declare the greatness of our God. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Jesus, you alone give us life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. creation will sing together. Yeah. 
So Jesus invites us to come. Not when we have everything figured out and put together, but just as we are. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the So he asks you to come as you are. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows. Trade your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, new life is born. Come. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Oh, come. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open So Jesus, we declare that there is no one like you. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him.
bear your cross. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. church and happy sabbath to you Um, i want to invite everybody to bow their heads for a garden of prayer uh, as we uh, come before the lord this morning let's pray dear god heavenly father thank you so much for yet another week um, lord where we can continue to know you day by day uh, in prayerful service uh, and submission to you god as Uh, As time goes on and as um, tensions rise, um, things become more difficult in this country, may we turn to you before we turn to any political party or cultural norm or anything else of that nature. To know you first is our priority, God. Um, help Help us to do just that. And Lord, I want to also lift up the families uh, right now that are worshiping at home, Uh, may you keep them safe. May you keep them. May you keep them wanting to know you that much more uh, as time goes on. And Lord, may you please do the same for the families that are attending uh, church events and other events. Uh, please be with their safety. Uh, even as we social distance, uh, we know that the ultimate protection does come from you. Uh, and Lord, as we uh, as we continue through life's journeys, um, and as we continue through the obstacles that those journeys present, uh, help us to have the utmost faith in your power, in your ability to instruct, in your ability to correct, um, in your ability to show judgment, uh, most of all, so that we that way we may be able to trust in you, most of all, uh, and not our own leanings, O oh Lord. Uh, God, you are so, so loving. You are so good. Uh, Sometimes it is beyond comprehension how good you are to us. Um, So help us to lean on your word so that we can just have an inch of understanding of how much you love us, that we may share that love with others. Uh, Lord, please bless this Sabbath day. Bless all of those in need of your care and your healing. Uh, And please be with us. As we learn from the pastor, be with the pastor's words, um, and as we go on to the next week, uh, spreading your love. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you so much for joining with us today in our worship service. As you can see, I am at church, and it is a beautiful, beautiful day. We praise the Lord. Today I want to start off with some deep thoughts uh, brought to you uh, from Mr. Dunham. So credits to Mr. Dunham and I'm just adding my own spin, okay? Deep thought number one. Teacher, give me a sentence using the words defense, defeat, and detail. Student, uh, when a horse jumps over defense, defeat goes before detail. I love that one. Quote number two, deep thought number two. Question, why do people come back from baby changing stations with the same baby? Deep thought, huh? Wow. And uh, deep thought number three, texting. A brilliant way to miscommunicate how you feel and misinterpret what other people mean. Hmm. Something to think about, huh? (laughs) What does the Bible do with miscommunication and misinterpretation. Something we're going to talk about here today. But before we do that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, please be with us in our time. Lord, for the next few minutes, we commit our minds and our hearts to you and you alone. Remove all the distractions and help us to be centered and focused upon the Word of God. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter 6, would you? Acts chapter 6. 
Acts chapter 6. We're going to read, and I hope that you are with me. Acts chapter 6, starting with verse 1. Now in those days, when the number of the, mul of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, per Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Verse 7, Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. We're going to stop right there, and let's take a closer look. If you would look at verse 1, which says, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Man, that sentence right there has a lot, and it is loaded. So let's look at that. So far in the book of Acts, it's been powerful stories of the Holy Spirit that has filled the disciples. It's filled this new movement. They had become such a powerful, powerful movement. They, they saw miracles and they saw healings. They saw so many great things um, in the church so far. Thousands of followers joined in just a short amount of time. But then all of a sudden, for the first time, Acts chapter 6, you see conflict. The first record of conflict is in Acts chapter 6. Uh-oh. A group in the church is complaining. The Bible calls it, in some versions, murmuring. And so, whoa, 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 let's stop and let's pay attention. For the first time we see murmuring, we see complaining. You see, up to that point, Satan's attacks on the church came from the outside of the church. It came from persecution. But the church was so full of the Holy Spirit that the enemy couldn't win from the outside. So Satan changed his tactics in Acts chapter 6. He started his attack from the church on the inside, turning one group of Christians against the other. Hmm, does that sound familiar at all? Does the enemy still work this way? What do you think out there? It's been said, and I've reminded you uh, many times, I believe, that the enemy of our souls specializes in three D's. He deceives, he destroys, and he divides. Garrett Kell says this, quote, Satan cannot destroy the gospel, so he does all he can to attack those who believe it. He tempts, he divides, he accuses, he schemes, he deceives, he lies, he stirs gossip, he provokes distrust, he feeds bitterness, but do not fear. Jesus is the good shepherd and he will guard us. Amen. I love that quote. I want you to recognize this, brothers and sisters, from the story of Acts chapter 6, the first problem within the church ever recorded. The enemy tried to divide them. Newsflash, the enemy still tries to divide his church. It is August 22, 2020. And the church at large has never been more divided. It seems like the enemy is winning. So I want to give you that end of the quote once again. Do not fear, church. Jesus is the good shepherd. He will guard us. Can I get an amen? Amen. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus knows where the wolves are. Jesus knows who the wolves are. And so as long as we stay close to the shepherd, sheep, we are going to be okay. Amen. Amen. This was the first time in the book of Acts that you see internal conflict. But the good news is how they dealt with this internal conflict, how they dealt with the division, is part of the miracle. 
You see, miracles aren't just when people get healed of physical ailments. Miracles are when people are also when people get healed of bitterness and strife towards one another. And that's usually why when people choose to forgive, there's a lot of emotions involved. People cry it out because a miracle just took place. God had to take stony and stubborn hearts and change stony and stubborn hearts. That's a miracle. When that happens, I want you to know that that's a miracle. God still does miracles in the church. People who don't talk to each other for a long time, for years even, and all of a sudden they choose to forgive? That's a miracle. You know, the tendency of human nature is to murmur and to complain, to find fault. It's easy to do. And in fact, the very word murmur comes from two baby sounds. Mur, mur, put together. Two baby sounds put together. When you complain, when you murmur, they're two baby sounds. Does anyone, is anyone picking up what I'm laying down? Two baby sounds. And if you notice, the murmuring took place regarding the daily distribution of food to the needy. In other words, church people arguing about church stuff. Christians arguing, arguing about how to do Christian things. Wow, it, it actually kind of sounds ridiculous when you think about it, when you take away the emotions and you think about it and you look at it from the outside, it sounds really ridiculous. Christians arguing about Christian things. Good people arguing about good things. Did you know that most people who leave the church don't leave because of disbelief? They don't leave because all of a sudden they don't believe anymore. They leave because something happened to them or they perceived that something happened to them. Someone said something. Someone criticized. Someone questioned something that had, that had good intentions but was misunderstood. Like a, like a text message that was totally misunderstood. It happens way too much. We murmur. We complain. And it destroys churches. Worse, it stops the movement of the Spirit. Man, I hope somebody is listening to me right now. And you are tempted to murmur and you are tempted to complain. I want us to really be careful because of what may happen. But look what was happening. Acts chapter 6, we just read that this movement was growing so fast and so they had to learn how to get organized. They were learning. They were a young church. They were learning. Money and goods were coming in because they had to take care of themselves and had to be distributed. Sin was being confronted within the church. The word was being preached and people were being sent out to make disciples. Man, that's a lot of work for a new church and for young believers. This growing church had to learn. And while they were learning, they were making mistakes. You guys hearing me? They were making mistakes. As they were learning, they were making mistakes such as they were neglecting some people who had to be taken care of. And so that's where the complaining was coming from. I want you to see something else from Acts chapter 6. It's important to know that the terms Hebrew and Hellenist were both groups from the church. They were both Christian groups. So you had Hebrew Christians and Hellenist Christians. Please understand this. This is very important. There's a huge point here that, that has to be made. You had Hebrew Christians, and Hebrew Christians were people that they were inclined to hold on to their, their Hebrew way of thinking and their culture. Then you had the Hellenist Christians who were inclined to, to adapt to the Greek culture of the day. You had Hebrew Christians and Hellenist Christians, and they were, they were very different from each other, although they were both Christians. Hebrew Christians, you see, looked at Hellenist Christians as people who were adapting to the culture. They were compromising with the culture. Oh, those liberals. The Hellenist Christians were looking at Hebrew Christians as people who were holding on to tradition and they were holier than thou. Oh, those conservatives. Two major groups within Christianity. Hmm, does that sound familiar? Let me say this, and I, and I want to say this kindly, but I want to say this boldly. There are some well-meaning Christians that think that conflict is the worst thing in the world. But it's really not. 
We are different. And we are called to unity, not uniformity. It's good that we're different. God has made us different. It's how we deal with our differences and conflicts that matter. Amen? Are you guys still with me? It's how we deal with our differences in our conflicts that really matter. And just because a church has conflict doesn't mean that God is not blessing that church. I feel like I had to say that again. Just because a church has conflict doesn't mean that God is not blessing that church. And the beauty of church is that we can be different and we can still work together. Amen? The problem with our culture today is that our church, that, let me say this again. The problem with our culture today and the church at large has been playing this unfortunate game is that we label each other. That's the culture of the day. We label each other. We play identity politics, even in church. And so those who different from, differ from us, they get canceled. And, and those who differ from us don't get heard. And then, so you got both sides. No one's listening. But I want to say this to you right now, brothers and sisters. Please hear this. In the name of Jesus Christ, the church doesn't practice cancel culture, only kingdom culture. It doesn't practice cancel culture. We don't cancel each other out. That's not how Acts chapter 6 does or, or did things. And so here's the hope and beauty of Acts chapter 6. I gave you a lot of negative, but now I want to flip that and give you the positive. Look what happened to Acts chapter 6. Here's what they did. They showed that problems don't have to tear us apart. Problems can actually make us stronger if we allow it and if we humble ourselves. And they practiced a very important Christian principle, and that is they compromised. I know that's a kind of a dangerous word to some, so let me say it this way. They didn't compromise with the world. They compromised with each other. They had compromise within the church. They saw that the daily distribution was taking a lot of time away from the 12 apostles. But the 12 apostles who were busy serving and distributing, remember they were doing other things. They were learning how to do administration. They were uh, learning how to teach and grow those who were already in the church. And they were still learning how to do mission and evangelizing those who were outside of the church. But they could not do all these things, at least do them well. They needed help. There were those, like the widows in Acts chapter 6, who were being neglected because the apostles had to do what they were called to do. And so there were things that were, being, that were not being taken care of. They were dropping the ball on some things, thus the murmuring, thus the complaining. And it wasn't a deliberate thing, you understand. The, the 12 apostles didn't mean to, to neglect some people, to neglect visiting some people and taking care of some people. It's just that they were doing other things. They, learned, they knew that they had to get better organized. The work had to be better organized. And they, dis, they, they needed to decide how best to use their time and their energy. So what did they do? Acts chapter 6, we just read it. They prayed and they chose seven godly men, men of God, to help. You see, the leadership, namely the 12 apostles, they needed to pray, they needed to vision, they needed to organize, they needed to spend time in the Word of God. They wanted to continue to serve, okay? The apostles were not above serving. They, they wanted to continue to serve. They wanted to continue to, to bless people, but they knew that they needed to delegate. This was all a part of God's plan for His church. You guys with me? This is what God was doing as they were growing. By the way, here's a great example for the church today of what the early church did. This is a strong lesson for us in the end time church. Listen, listen, I want you to notice this. They didn't throw the complainers out. They didn't alienate them. They didn't just dismiss the complainers. In fact, the complainers had a good point. There were people being neglected. But they didn't use this complaint to divide the church. Oh, let's have the Hellenists on one side and let's have the Hebrew Christians on the other side. 
Instead, they listened, they brought everything to the table, they listened and they prayerfully delegated and brought more people into doing the work of ministry. So the early church brought people together and they compromised for the sake of the mission. The mission was the most important thing. They heard each other out, they listened to each other's complaints, and they came together and found a solution together. Man, isn't that what the church should be all about? That we can be different, but yet we can sit at the table and we can buy grace and by prayer we can come to a solution together we can work things out and we can compromise towards the mission amen and i hope you guys are with me still listen listen factions are going to happen because we are human and we are different how we deal with them that's what really matters and acts chapter 6 is such an important chapter and it's such an important story for our time because brothers and sisters if there was ever a place and if there was ever a people that can learn to work Together, despite the differences, it ought to be the church of Jesus Christ. So, the twelve apostles, the Word of God says, they continued steadfastly in the ministry of the Word. Since they delegated, they were able to continue steadfastly or faithfully in the ministry of the Word of God. In other, of God. In other words, they, were, they, they did what they were really called to do, the most important work. Yes, they could serve. Yes, they can do in reach, but the first duty for the apostles was the ministry of the Word of God. And so look at verse 5 once again. It says, And the saying, or this idea, pleased the whole multitude, or it pleased the church. They had worked together on a solution, and they were ready to be used by God, and God was pleased with their unity. Look at verse 7. Look at the result. You guys see it? It's awesome. Then it says, after all that work, then the word of God spread, the number of the disciples multi multiplied, and great many priests came to the faith. Because, because this situation was handled with, with wisdom and with sensitivity and with a spirit of unity, a potential divisive issue was diffused and the gospel as a result continued to go forth. Listen church, <laughs> God can turn a mess into a message. God can turn a, 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 a misunderstanding into a miracle. And only God can do that. And did you catch the surprise at the end of verse 7? I, I, I love this little surprise, this little detail that you could possibly read through and not really pay attention. But in the, the surprise in verse 7, it says, and a great company of priests came to the faith. You know, we understand that the church grew and the disciples multitude multiplied, but a great number of priests. Man, let's put that in our context. Who would surprise us if they ever came to our church? What if, what if all of a sudden um, leaders from other denominations came? <laughs> what if all of a sudden leaders from our community came? What if other religions started to come what if prodigals who once were so bitter of the church what if they came man this is the surprise of acts chapter 6 a great many priests came to faith a great many there is the miracles right there the miracles the miracles and there were so many miracles and they came to faith man isn't that awesome isn't that so of god you know, we think we need more powerful arguments to win people. We think we need powerful preaching to win people. We think we need great buildings and great um, um, programs to win people. Acts chapter 6 reminds us what we really need is the Holy Spirit. And what we really need is to work together. We can't expect hearts to change toward the gospel when the hearts of those who know the gospel haven't changed. Testimonies, volume 9, page 183, my favorite author says, As workers together for God, brethren and sisters, lean heavily upon the arm of the Mighty One, labor for unity, 
labor for love, and you will become a power in the world. You know, a good friend of ours, I won't say her name, because um, I don't want to embarrass her. And besides, I love when you guys send me stuff, and I don't want that to stop. But a good friend of ours sent me a song a week ago. It's an old song. And when I was going through this message, I, that song just kept going through my head. And I wanted to end with you thinking about the lyrics to this song. Um, <laughs> uh, don't listen to my awful singing, but listen to these lyrics, please. And the song goes, uh, They will know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Let's keep worshiping our Savior and our Redeemer. Alone in my sorrows. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no peace to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart Giving a My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to, to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes all. Released, released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. It's your love, 
My brothers and sisters, uh, before we say our closing prayer, I just want to say a few things to you here today. Uh, some very, very important items coming up uh, for our church. Next Sabbath, August 29, we are going to have another Vespers, Outdoor Vespers. Uh, this time it's going to start at 6 p.m. Uh, we want to uh, be able to just enjoy this beautiful weather together before it gets dark. And so I'm going to invite you out to the HAA Hinsdale Adventist Academy lawn where we met for the baptisms a few weeks ago next Sabbath August 29 okay we would love to worship together again we're still gonna have our morning service just like here just like this but we will also have an evening service together so please come out I would love to see all of you there secondly uh, a few weeks ago uh, something awful happened in Beirut, Lebanon. And uh, it has moved our hearts as leaders of the church to do what we can to help. Now, we help in a lot of places, and especially the Philippines, when things like this happen, when awful things like this happen. But we want to start getting our minds um, uh, 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 even wider, our scope even wider as far as our help to our brothers and sisters. And Adra, Lebanon, uh, has been doing a lot of good work there and we want to help our our people on the front lines in Beirut they had an awful awful bomb there are th over 300,000 people there who are left homeless and we want to help so we are uh, making a collection for the next few weeks and if you want to donate to Adra Lebanon um, you can do that online or you can just let us know or send that to the church we will be glad to work together to help those in need uh, in that beautiful country of Lebanon 
And then lastly, I just want to encourage you, it is not too late to join a small group. Some of our small groups have been going for a long time. Some of them are new, but we have a small group every single night except for Monday night because it's our meeting night. And uh, we would like to invite you, if you are not a part of a small group, please, we're going through the book of Acts together. And uh, really, you can listen to a message and hopefully be inspired and hopefully learn something. But it's in those small groups that, uh, that, that God really, really um, uh, m uh, makes the Word of God come alive. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. Would you take a, a hand next to you? Would you take someone's shoulder, however you're comfortable? And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, Acts chapter 6 is such a humbling chapter, but it's such a, such a teachable chapter for us here the end time church as we learn about the early church and how they dealt with division, how they dealt with problems as they came together in the spirit of unity and the spirit of, of, of working together. Please, Lord, help us. Lord, the early church turned the world upside down and you don't expect anything less from your church now. So please, humble us. Give us that spirit of coming together. And Lord, May you always get the glory and may you turn mess into a message. And Lord, may you turn misunderstandings into miracles. Only you can do this. And so we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and let all God's people say, Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and have a re wonderful rest of your Sabbath. I've seen you move. Jesus, your promises will never fail us. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never.